the questions have been up for a little bit. Uh, all the, the normal ones, your, where you're from, your job title, how you heard about the webinar, and of course, your level of expertise with the Matt Connect. So if we can take a look at those and see what, what we've got. Excellent. I'm going to end polling now. We've had uh, a little over 75% vote. For that first question, what is your job title? 59% said teacher of the visually impaired. But we've got lots of other folks joining us today. Some parents, some rehab professionals, braille transcribers, AT specialists, and ONM instructors. So welcome to the webinar today. Where are you from? Most people are joining us from the Southeast United States with good representation across the nation and a few international folks. How'd you hear about the webinar? Most said email from APH. So great. We're so glad that those emails are working and you guys are able to learn about all of the exciting webinars that we are providing with our partners, especially Humanware, who's joining us today. And finally, our, our really specific question for today, what is your comfort level using or teaching Matt Connect? 69% said they were beginners. The rest said intermediate. We don't have any experts or any Jedis in the room with us, except Eric, who's joining us today. So thanks for being here with us uh, to answer some really uh, beginner questions for getting started with the Mac Connect. And Paul, I hand it back to you. Hey, thank you. So let's talk about housekeeping and how we're going to run things today. Please type your questions in the chat. <clears throat> Also be aware, though, that there may be some times where there is no chat available. Uh, the chat's going to be on for a good bit of the time, though. Okay, our guest today uh, has been an important part of all these Matt Connect webinars. Eric Beauchamp, Director of Product Management at Humanware. And uh, he has shown us so many different things on the Matt Connect, and he's going to show us some more today. Let's talk about some challenges, some things that may be difficult or things you may have run into. Uh, we, we know that teachers and students are used to CCT, CCTV type magnifiers and that making changes can be difficult. Uh, there is a belief among some that using the Mac Connect may be uh, too high tech for them, uh, maybe too much of a jump into the technology realm. Uh, there may be some folks uh, who struggle thinking that uh, students aren't able to share their work as easily on the Mat Connect. And um, teachers need a way to share handouts and assignments with students. And some, sometimes the problem is that uh, teachers don't know how to do it, so they can't show the students. And so the students don't know how to do it. And then of course, distance learning it uh, all definitely provides challenges for receiving and submitting paperwork. So if those things are things that you struggle with, we're going to try to work on making some of those easier for you today. Let's look at our learning objectives and what we're going to be doing. So participants are gonna learn three ways to edit a worksheet directly on the Matt Connect screen, two ways to read a document on the Matt Connect identify how to convert documents to a PDF, and identify at least two ways to share their work with others. Uh, with that in mind, uh, let's get started. And uh, Eric? Thank you very much for having me. And it's always a pleasure to be here on these webinars. I love giving these webinars. Uh, it, it, uh, it's refreshing. <laughs> Um, and today, uh, if I was looking at the, um, the, the one of the slides that Paul was presenting, uh, where we see that the Mac Connect is a, an electronic magnifier, uh, but at the same time, an intelligent, I'm going to say, I'm going to use the word intelligent magnifier because you can do, you can do so much things with the Mac Connect, um, but you don't have to use all those things. So I'm going to show you today really the basis of the, the whole design of, uh, of this device, where the dream was to have a magnifier without using paper. So I, I call it a paperless CCTV. We, we hear that word all, all the time, paperless environment, where we don't want to waste paper and want to keep our trees um, while the Mac Connect will help on doing that. But first, I'm going to show you really the basic uh, way of using a, a magnifier. 
is with paper and then we'll move on. I'm going to show you more uh, options that are available for you or the student. So I'm just going to change to my other camera again that are held by pucks. That's a real Canadian way of, uh, of using pucks, hockey pucks. Uh, right now we're in a pandemic, so we're not playing hockey. So I'm going to use them to hold my camera. Uh, the camera, I always like to use a camera without sharing my screen because you see my finger on the screen, you see where I tap. Uh, so it's something that um, that I like showing, but also I'll, I'll try to be more descriptive or a lot descriptive for people that are not seeing the screen or are not able to. So right now I have my Mat Connect in front of me. It's docked on my, on my, my stand and I am right in the middle of the screen, I have my magnifier application. So Prodigy is a software that runs on the Mac Connect, which includes several applications on the main menu. So we're gonna start off with uh, the magnifier application, but before tapping on that application, I'd like to show you just a little trick to, um, to do when using the Mac Connect to take a picture of a, of a document or something like that, is just to put a little corner tape at the bottom here so that you can see, you can feel the corner where to place that corner edge of your paper when taking a capture i'm going to show you when this is going to be uh, useful for you guys um, and and just that corner it really adds that tactic tactile feeling to it when you want to place the page at the right uh, at the right level or the right position to take a full page capture so what I'm going to do, I'm going to tap on my screen on my magnifier application. So very simple, tap. I'm going to bring up the screen, OK? But first, since I'm at Connect uh, with the, before starting all this, I'm going to show you a bit of the stand here. The stand, you have the top part of the stand where uh, you have the tablet is docked, and then you have the back of the stand. The stand. You can move it forward, you can lift the tablet. So really you can find the right position for your student or for yourself or for your daughter or, uh, or, or son. Because I saw, I think Betsy Ann said there was parents in the, uh, in the, in the, web, in the webinar. So uh, very comfortable, very ergonomic way of, of placing uh, the stand. Also when writing underneath a stand, because that's where we're gonna start, I prefer using a small little pencil. So my pencil uh, has been sharpened to a, a smaller size so that fits really snugly underneath the tablet so I have enough space to write. It all depends on the age of the student or the age of the user. Um, smaller hands uh, is easier to use a smaller pencil also sometimes. So let's start. I have with me here a math homework or math assignment that I'm going to use. I'm just going to place it underneath and tap on my magnifier. On the screen, what we see on the screen, we see some, uh, there's three parts to the screen. So we see the document on top. So you see my math assignment, but you also see some triangles on each side. Those triangles are cutouts and we bring everything there's an algorithm that works inside the camera to bring everything straight. So you don't have that Star Wars effect. If I would turn off that, you would have a Star Wars effect because the camera's at an angle. So you would see that Star Wars effect going further out. So right now I have my homework. Oh, and the third part of the screen is the button banner at the bottom. The button banner includes uh, six buttons. So starting from uh, the left-hand side, you have a back button, which is the arrow button. And then moving forward uh, or moving on the side to the right, you have the settings button, the second button, where you have several settings that you can uh, configure uh, on when using the magnifier. Like for example, contrast colors, if you want to deactivate that uh, those triangles or black triangles, it's called angle correction. So all kinds of these, uh, if you wanna have the OCR done on your document or not, so all these settings are available on the second button. Third button is to turn on or off the lights. And then uh, fourth button is to take a capture of the document. And then the fifth and the sixth button is to zoom out or zoom in to the document. 
You can use gestures on the tablet because it's a, a touch screen. So I can use a pinch and zoom to magnify it on my, on my picture, or I can use the plus or the minus sign. I'm looking at my screen right now and I, I feel that I'm mirrored right here. I'm just gonna set my, uh, just gonna re-mirror that because I, I, was, I was going from, there we go. I think this is better. Okay, so um, I or I, to, to zoom in, I can use the plus or the minus to zoom in or out. And then with my pencil, I can come in. And as you notice, well, as soon as I put my pencil, the um, auto focus uh, activates all the time. So what you can do is just double tap on the screen in the middle of the screen, and you'll have a AF with a bar, red bar on it, an icon on the top right corner, and that's going to lock your autofocus. So now you can put your pen underneath without the autofocus trying to focus on the pen or uh, your fingers. So here I can write my answer, which is two plus three is equal to five. This is one way of using the Mad Connect, really uh, just like an ordinary CCTV. The Mad Connect also offers a distance viewing camera, which I have set up already here which I have right here is a Kodak PixPro camera, a wireless camera that connects to the Wi-Fi, directly to the Wi-Fi. So how to use that? It's already paired to your Mad Connect. And this is another way to maybe uh, use a Mad Connect to fill in a worksheet is to go into your distance application. So if I swipe to the left, you will find the distance application, which I can tap on and turn on my camera. There's a little power button on the top of the camera, which you can use to power it on. As soon as it uh, detects the tablet or the camera that connects to the tablet, you will be able to see at distance on the screen. So here I have a board with a nice message from my son saying that he loves me, but also have a the same math, math assignment on my board. So I can use again the pinch and zoom, I don't like using the pinch and zoom on the distance uh, camera. I like using the uh, plus button. So just press on the plus button and it's going to zoom in gradually into onto the board to my uh, math assignment right here. And uh, what you can do is uh, take a capture of that. So on the button banner again, you have the back button on the left. Second button is your settings. And the third button is your capture button. And then you have the fourth and the fifth button is your plus and minus to zoom in or zoom out. So I'm going to take a capture of this. It, it's going to take the capture, it's going to store it on the camera, and then it's going to transfer it to the tablet directly to the gallery of Prodigy. So to go back to the main menu, very simple shortcut, two finger, double tap, and you're back to the main menu. Very quick way, an effective way to go into my gallery, which I'm going to swipe to the right and I'm gonna find my gallery application. And if I swipe inside my gallery, you'll find a folder called distance. And in here, I have the picture or the capture that I've just taken. I can, if I want to, move that into the gallery to have the optical character recognition done to it, or to maybe sort out my documents. To do this, I'm just gonna press and hold on the document. And then I'm gonna say, move to the gallery. I like moving it to the gallery because I can create some more folders in the gallery and then classify my work and, um, and, and be ready to work at, at very efficiently. So here I'm going to go and open my assignment, my math assignment, and it's going to try to do some OCR. Since this is an, uh, the OCR is optical character recognition, it's going to try to do that. Since it's a math assignment, it's not going to be very good at detecting all the characters or very good at determining where the characters are, are, are placed on the sheet. So we're going to be um, wanting to um, hide the result. So I don't want to have those results on my page. I don't know why it's taking so long. Let's try this again. There we go. So we have the optical character recognition that run through that ran through my assignment, which is not great. So what you want to do is a, a shortcut, is a swipe from top to bottom on the screen, 
on the right hand side of the screen. So I'm going to go from top to bottom with my finger and I'm going to go in through, I can have a negative format. So the on white on black background, or I can have a positive um, uh, contrast, which is going to be a black on white background. And again, I have true colors, which is the true colors of my assignment. And again, I can use my pinch and zoom. And I'm not going to use a pencil to fill in my math assignment. I will use the screen. And on the button banner again, you'll see on the left hand side, the back button, the setting button. And now instead of a capture button, I will have a pencil as an icon. So I'm going to tap on that. And as soon as I do that, the button banner offers me other options, but I can start writing right away on the screen with my finger if I want to. So here I got, again, the same question here, two plus three is equal to five. So I can write directly on the screen my answer. And I can do that uh, throughout my answers. And as soon as I press the back button, it's gonna be saved automatically in my gallery. If, and if I go back to my gallery, I can see my icon is going to show my result. It's going to show automatically my answers on there. And for example, I'm at distance. Uh, um, I would like to share it to my teacher so that uh, my teacher corrects the assignment. Press and hold on that, what I want to send. And then on the top, the first option that you can do is a share document. And I'm going to share it as a PDF. And then I can select either to save it on my Google Drive, which is already installed on the tablet, or I can maybe send it through Gmail by email, or I can use a Dropbox. So I know that a lot of people use Classroom nowadays in, in schools. Uh, so you might want to share it in that same Google Drive that the Classroom application uses in order to share my homework or share the assignment to the teacher to get um, uh, corrected. So I just shown you here a couple of nice user use cases, uh, very easy to use in live mode at the same time being in virtual because we use the screen uh, to edit that. But I'd like to show you more on what we can do because I talked about paperless. Now I won't be needing this anymore and I won't be needing my whiteboard anymore. So I think Paul has a little poll question right now uh, that I'm going to that 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 we're going to ask and then we're going to go through the answers with you guys right after the poll question. Okay. So this is a pre-reading question. We're not expecting you to know the answer. This is more we want to see just what you think, what your guess might be. So, what kinds of documents can you upload onto a Mac Connect? Uh, you may select multiple here, Word doc, Excel spreadsheet, PDF, or HTML. What kinds of documents can you upload onto a Mat Connect? Word doc, Excel spreadsheet, PDF, or HTML. This is a good time to throw any questions you have out to Eric as this poll is up. I saw there was a Star Wars uh, mode question or Star Wars effect. Did we get that answered? I think we did, right? I answered it in the chat, but I was a little clumsy in, in answering it. So, Eric, if you want someone to who hasn't it. heard of the Star Wars effect, can you explain what what that is, Eric? I, I can explain uh, the Star Wars effect is when you watch the old, you know, the, the, the old movies of Star Wars, the generic, you see the writing uh, at the bottom of the screen and it moves forward in the back of the screen. So the writing is, is getting farther away from the, the person watching the screen. Does that make sense? Uh, for you, so, so you start off, you can read the uh, the text, but further up the screen, you won't be able to read the text because it gets kind of like further away. Um, I think right, that's, that's the best way of, of explaining it. Oh, absolutely, because your camera is tilted traditionally on the Mac Connect. So those triangles are compensating for that so that text at the top of the document doesn't appear much smaller than text at the bottom of the document and it's it, not distorted. Exactly. Great. So thank you for that question. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to, to <laughs> define what we meant by Star Wars. Event. Yeah, that's a term we've used on several <laughs> different webinars, but there's always a chance somebody hasn't heard it. Absolutely. I feel geeky, I feel geeky when I use that word. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, even even my I haven't seen most of the Star Wars movies, and um, I, I'm still familiar with that scroll where it's very clear and and close and large at the bottom of the screen and kind of scrolls into the distance. So I think it's a it's a common ish term to use, not just for for nerdy folks who love Star Wars. <laughs> All right. And always, um, if you uh, are having issues with your polls, please feel free to drop your responses in the chat. Um, that's another way to interact with these polls. But we've had about 75% complete this poll. So we're going to go ahead and close it and share the results. Again, this was a pre-reading question. We don't expect you guys to know the answer. This is to really introduce Eric uh, talking about our next segment. So for the question, what kinds of documents can you upload onto a Mac, con Mac Connect? Check all that apply. Uh, the options were Word docs, Excel spreadsheets, PDFs, and HTMLs, and 92% uh, said PDFs. That was the highest category by far. Now, Eric, what was the correct response? The correct response is PDF. You can only import PDFs on the Mat Connect. But I'll show, because all these answers here, the Word document, the Excel spreadsheet, I'm going to show you a way on how to import them into the Prodigy or into the uh, Connect, um, the Mat Connect uh, using PDFs. So I'm going to show you a little way to convert all your documents into a PDF and import them into your Mat Connect. Okay, so um, can I share my screen? I don't know if um, I'm going to share my computer screen. Uh, there we go. So I will just show you here. A, um, a website that uh, I like to use to convert some documents. Um, uh, Betsy Ann, can you confirm that you see my, uh, my screen? Yes, I can see the onlineconvert.com screen. This is a, a nice website that I like to use, uh, the onlineconvert.com. Uh, uh, and you can convert all kinds of documents. And uh, the one that is interesting is Document Converter, which is the second um, rectangle on the top of this, uh, of this website. Again, this is on my computer. So I, I would imagine you know, the use case for this is a teacher that wants to convert a Word document uh, to a PDF. So this is what I'm going to be doing here. So you got. Um, document converter and you have a drop down so you can see here select the target format so I'm going to convert to PDF and then uh, it's going to bring you to the next page and then it's going to say choose your file so I have a docx or a Microsoft Word document that I'm just going to drop in which is a, a little short story the little red writing hood and then you hit the conversion button and that will convert everything to a PDF file what you want to do after that is to uh, put it into or copy it into your um, Google Drive. And that would be the easiest way to, to do this. Com copy it to your Google Drive. And then on the Mat Connect, that same Google Drive uh, you can use to uh, go and extract that PDF. So I will, this is the little tool that I like um, to use. And I'm going to go switching back to my Mat Connect. And I already have that document already copied to my Google Drive. And I'm going to show you how to do this on the Mat Connect. Go to a, a Google Drive and import that PDF inside uh, the software Prodigy and inside my gallery. So I'm going to swipe on my main menu. And I'm going to go to my APH Toolbox. APH Toolbox, uh, this application lists I'd say about a dozen of applications that are pre-installed on your Mat Connect. But what I like adding to this list is my Google Drive. So I'm going to go into the settings of this application, which is the button on the top right corner. I tap on that. And then you got two options here. Choose an application or organize applica uh, applications. Choose an application. It's really easy to understand. Organize is to uh, maybe put a a, an application on top of another, so you're you're organizing your priority on your um, on your applications. Here, I'm just going to choose applications, and I'm going to go down to. This is a list of all my applications that are installed on my Mat Connect, and I should have yes, Google. So I'm going to tap on Google, 
And these are all the applications that are offered in, um, that Google offers. So you have docs, you have, oh, there's my drive. So I want to have drive. And there's a little checkbox that as soon as I tap on the drive, it, there's a little checkbox on the right hand side that is, that is going to show. That means that it's going to be added to my list. So if I hit the back button on the top left corner of the screen to my list, back to my list, I should be seeing my drive. If you're not seeing it, just go back to the main menu, come back into my APH toolbox. And there we have it. On the top of my list, I have my drive. So my Google Drive here. So I'm going to tap on Google Drive and it's going to start my Google Drive. So I have my Google Drive already connected. Here I have several documents and I'm going to find my little red riding hood. Now to navigate inside the uh, Google Drive, you can use the uh, Android accessibility, which you can turn on in the settings. And that will turn on a special feature, which is a triple tap on the screen. So a triple tap on the screen will magnify all this for you. And you can go even further. Furthermore, you can use a pinch and zoom on the screen, screen and then have that, that big font uh, better to, to, to be able to read it. And on this, on this PDF or on this file in my Google Drive, I have the title of the, the PDF, but I also have three little dots on the side of the title. I'm going to press on those three little dots. And there's going to be a, I'm going to zoom out. There's going to be a pop-up or a menu that's going to show. I'm going to scroll through that menu and I'm going to select uh, download. So it's going to download, download this document onto my Mac Connect on my internal storage of the Mac Connect. If you wanted to zoom out, just triple tap again on the screen. Whoops. Okay. And I'm just going to go back to Prodigy by tapping on the little circle at the bottom of the screen, really in the middle of the screen at the bottom. You'll go back to your APH toolbox. And shortcut, two finger, double tap, back to my main menu. I'm going to go into my gallery and I want to import that PDF that we just saved on my uh, on my internal storage. So I'm in my gallery. I go tap on the button on the top right corner of the screen. That's a settings menu and you have several options. But further down, I think it's the it's the fourth option down is the import option. So tap on that. In the in import options menu, you'll have internal storage. I'm going to tap on that again. And I will scroll down to download. So the download folder, this is where we're going to find my little red writing hood PDF document. So I'm going to tap on that. And it's going to load. It's going to be converting my PDF in, in the Prodigy format. So here you go. So it converted everything it to, and brought it into my gallery, into my Prodigy uh, software uh, gallery. And it created this kind of folder, which it, it tells you it's a book. So if I tap on the book, I'm going to see that my little short story is all in here. And I can go from one page to another. And I can start reading uh, that the book by just tapping on the first page. Now you can press play. It's going to read it out loud to you. Um, you can zoom in. And then also, if you want to change the uh, pages, you can just uh, zoom out and just swipe on the screen and it's going to go to the next page. I can also navigate through the book. Let's say you have a really big book, a couple of hundred pages uh, that you can bring into the, uh, the Prodigy software. You can go on to the settings here and you have the go to option and you can write a, a page number. So if I want to go to page five, it's going to bring, I uh, just write five and it's going to bring me to my page five. I can select that page and start reading there. Okay. So let's say I, I needed to read this in my schoolwork and I need to highlight or I need to remember stuff. What I like to do when reading or having a reading exercise here, I can use uh, the annotation tool. Again, when I tap on one of the page and while I'm reading, you have the button banner at the bottom and the third button on the left will be a little pen button. So I'm going to tap on that and I can modify the, this page. So I can write on the page to take notes. I'm going to be using a little stylus here. Any stylus can work, but I like using a bigger or wider stylus uh, like with a rubber 
uh, edge on it. I just find that it works uh, better on, uh, on the Mac Connect. So here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a little note here and I'm going to circle uh, this word here because I needed to find the word bed in my text, for example. And uh, I'm going to put a little arrow uh, and I'm just going to write here, this is bed. So I just put a little note for myself on the side. And I can also zoom in and zoom out using two fingers as, as any other documents, but I can also highlight in the text by showing again the little button banner. I can tap on the pencil here and this, it's gonna change, that icon is gonna change to a highlighter now. So when I'm gonna go into the document, I can highlight some part of the text. And if I can use a pen again, it's gonna highlight in yellow one part of my text. So I can remember that uh, that that sentence is on that page. This is an important sentence or an important paragraph. I can highlight out the whole paragraph. I can change the color if I don't like the yellow. I can change the color of, uh, of what I'm writing on the page or my highlighter by going again on my button banner. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, when the button banner is hidden, there's a little bubble at the bottom center. And just tap on that little bubble and the button banner will show up. Now the fourth button uh, from the left is like a palette. It's a palette, a color palette that I can choose and I can select any kind of color that I'd like to. If I don't like the yellow, I can maybe change it to magenta and I'm gonna be highlighting in magenta now. The same for the pencil. I can be, uh, I can be correcting, I can be a teacher and I can be correcting in red if I'd like to, uh, my assignments, the, the, my, my, my students' assignments. There's another way that uh, I like using. Um, but for this example, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back into my book. So just hit the back button and I'm back to my book here. When I navigated to my fifth page in my book, I went into my settings on the top right corner. I have two options here. I got the go to, which I use to go into my, to my fifth page in my book, but I can append. So I'm going to just append here. And this is going to append either a new page or a capture. For example, if I'd like, I, there was a, 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 I'd like to add a page or a capture page in my book between those two pages, between my, my fourth and my fifth page, uh, I can do so just by here. So I'm just going to add a new page. The new page will add a blank page so that uh, I can use that blank page to take notes. So it added to the end of my book, a blank page. And I, I can write either with my stylus, my finger, or I can write it with a keyboard. So I'm just gonna tap again on my pencil. It's gonna change it to a highlighter. And if I type it again, it's gonna, uh, it's gonna change to a T. Now a T means that I'll be using the keyboard, either a virtual keyboard or a Bluetooth keyboard. And to start writing with the keyboard, I will just press and hold on, on, the, on the page and my virtual keyboard will pop up if I don't have a Bluetooth keyboard connected. And I can use my virtual keyboard uh, to type in the text that I'd like to. I can take notes, I can, there's, there's, there's a, it's a big text um, area that you, can, that, that you can take any kind of text. You can change lines take some more text. And then once you're ready uh, and you've, uh, you're taking down your notes, you can just send that to the page and just by pressing on the top right corner, uh, the button, which is a little paper airplane, press on that. And my text is in my page right now, my blank page. If I wanted to have it bigger, just tap on the entered text that you have there and it's gonna highlight it for you. And you can use a pinch and zoom anywhere. It's gonna make it bigger for you. I can use a finger and just maybe place it somewhere else on my page, tap anywhere in the page and that highlight will disappear. And I can, zo can zoom in or zoom out into my, into my notes. And if I go back to my gallery, those notes will be stored on into my, or will be appended into my uh, book that I just imported. Same for an exam. 
uh, or a math exam or a math assignment, I can answer my math and have everything um, stored in here. So I did not use my paper version of the little, little red writing hood to take a capture of each page and, and then store it to the gallery. I imported a PDF that was a Word document that I converted to a PDF and then imported it into uh, my um, gallery. Once I'm done, let's say this is a, a reading a, a exercise that I had to do, um, I can send the whole reading or the whole book or a specific page. Let's, for example, take the whole book and I want to share it back to my teacher. So I'm gonna go back to my gallery, press and hold on the document. Each time you press and hold on any kind of document, it could be a page, it could be a whole book, it's gonna give you an action. It's gonna give you a list of actions you can do on that item. So the first one, like I showed you previously, is a shared option. And I will share it back uh, as a PDF. And I will save it into my Google Drive. So I'm gonna save it. What it's doing here, it's converting it back to a PDF and sharing it to my Google Drive. Now the Google Drive uh, application will pop up on top of Prodigy. And here you can select the folder that, that I want to uh, paste it in. Uh, so I'm gonna select my PDF here folder. Then I can go back and then select. And then just uh, add, yeah, I can change the, the, everything that's on here. I can change the name of the of the document if I want to. I can have if I have several accounts on my uh, on my Mad Connect, I can use a different account if I'd like to. And then once I'm ready, I just press the save uh, button at the bottom of this uh, this window. If I can't read it, triple tap on it, and then you can just scroll here at the bottom. You can see the save button. I'm gonna tap on the save and it's saved into my Google Drive. Again, Google, I, I can save it to a Google Drive that is used for, um, um, for the Google Classroom that um, the school is using. Um, so I think uh, Paul has a little trivia question. All right, so just a quick poll question for everybody. This is just a true or false question. And we want to know, uh, true or false, users can operate Google Drive on the Mac Connect. True or false, users can operate Google Drive on the Mac Connect. And while that is going on, we can check out the chat and see if we've got any questions. There may have been one about making sure that somebody understood how you were getting Google Drive to come up, Eric. Yeah, so Eric, the question in the chat is, when you have a doc in Google Drive that you want to import, you go to gallery and import and into internal storage, and then what option do you choose? So can you just walk us through that, um, that step again from importing the doc, the doc in Google Drive to the gallery and uh, so forth? Okay, so, uh, so I can start on my Google, my Google Drive. Okay, um, if I want to, I can go out into, I showed you previously how to get Google Drive in your APH toolbox, but there's another way to, to go into Google Drive. Uh, you can press and hold five fingers on or four fingers on, on the screen and you're out into your uh, Android system. And on here, there's Google Drive. So I'm gonna tap on Google Drive. I had already a book here that was uh, open, but for example, let's see if I have my, oh, I have a math exam right here. So what you do, uh, I'm just gonna zoom in. Ah. I'm gonna zoom in here so that you can see a bit more where I'm tapping. And you see my document, there's a little, there's three buttons on the side of the title of the document. Tap on the three buttons and there's gonna be a pop-up that's gonna show up. And in that pop-up, you just scroll here. And uh, very soon in the next version of Prodigy, you'll be able to open with and then select Prodigy. Right now, it's not working, but the workaround for that is to download onto uh, your Mat Connect and then come back to Prodigy. Now to come back to Prodigy, either, I'm just gonna zoom out here so you can see my application here. Either I can hit the back button here 
on the top of the Google Drive application, or just tap right in the middle of the screen, there's a, there's a circle. Just tap on that, and it's gonna come back to Prodigy. Now, go into Gallery. On the top right corner of the screen in my Gallery application, there is a, a button with gears on it. Tap on that, that's your Settings menu. Scroll down the menu, and you'll find Import. There's an option called Import. Tap on Import, go into Internal Storage, and then in Internal Storage, all your documents that have been downloaded onto the tablet will be in a folder called Download. So scroll that list until you see the, or you hear the word Download or the Download folder. In my case, it's one, two, three, four. It's the fifth uh, document down. So I'm gonna tap on download. And here are all my downloaded documents that I got. So I had here, uh, the, 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 the most recent one that I've just downloaded is my edition 10 PDF that I just downloaded. But I have Little Red Riding Hood 1, Little Red Riding Hood, so I downloaded it more than once. So that's why I have two files here. And I have a Aladdin. PDF, which I'm going to show you after. Uh, so I'm going to tap on the addition PDF. And the conversion is all going to be done by itself. Everything's going to be done by itself. And it's going to create inside your gallery, it's going to create a folder called the name of the PDF that you imported. So in my case, it's addition 10. So I can tap on that folder. And I have my two pages, two page assignment that I have to do. So this is how you import. I hope that it, it answers um, it an answers the the question that we had in the in the chat. It does, yes. Um, so thank you for that, Eric. Another question that came in that's that's really in a similar vein um, is what is the storage capacity um, for for saving things like high school textbooks as PDFs? Like how much memory does Mac Connect have, and how might that impact being able to download? A larger text. Well, uh, Prodigy, if I if I remember, Matt Connect, I think has eight. Well, with all the system and all that, I think there's eight gigabytes of memory that is available. If I remember on the top of my head, but if you need more storage on the side of the tablet, on the right hand side, I'm just going to show here with my camera. On the right hand side here, there is a slot for a micro SD card to expand that memory. So you can buy any micro SD card and in, insert that into your Mac Connect and it, it's gonna, you're gonna have more, it's gonna extend your memory on, uh, on, the, on your Mac Connect. But you can import by, you can import a 100 page document if you want in Prodigy. It's just going to take a bit longer. The process is going to be a bit longer because it's 100 pages that it needs to convert into the right format for Prodigy. Great. Any other, any other questions that uh, I can answer? Yes, one just came in. Uh, when you upload a doc from Google Drive into the gallery, should it be able to read all types of docs? This goes back to the um, original PDF question. Well, yes, in Google Drive, you'll be able to read all kinds of documentation. You can read your, your Excel, but the question was really uh, importing into Prodigy. The only type of documents that can be imported and have it inside Prodigy, inside this software, inside your gallery, uh, is only PDFs. Great, thank you for that. Hopefully that answered um, their question. We've got two more questions. Uh, do we have time sure. to get to those or would we like to hold those to the end? No, we can We can, We can. can do them right away. And I'll, I'm just gonna show you a little trick at the end here after this, uh, again, still, with the PDFs and just to show you a nice little feature if ever you get stuck with a PDF. But yeah, let's let's answer those two little questions and then and then move on. Great. So this question came in a little bit ago. Uh, what's the benefit of this over voice dream reader? They seem to have similar note and highlighting functions. I'm not familiar with dream reader. I don't know. That if that's is a that is an iPhone app. 
So oh, it, we're talking okay. apples and oranges here because okay. uh, that's an iPhone app. Um, so it's it's the, well, well, the, the I, functions may be the same, but you know it's a different platform. Gotcha. But I'm, I'm, I could give you I can give you some great benefits for using uh, the Mac Connect with the Prodigy software. As you're seeing on the screen right now, it, they're big icons. The fonts are humongous. Uh, we try to utilize most of the screen that is available on the Mac Connect. So the interface of Prodigy is, is really accessible. And as you can see, the only part that I used inside Android was the Google Drive part. And that's going to soon disappear because we're going to have everything done in Prodigy. So you don't really need to go out into the Android system. You can all stay inside the Prodigy uh, environment and have that accessible text, accessible contrast for the user. Just to clarify, voice stream probably is on Android too, although I don't know that for sure. But okay. yeah, it's definitely, it's still a different setup entirely. Yep. Great. Thank you for both uh, for that help with that question. And our final question before we move on, uh, Eric, do you have any uh, suggestion for um, one of our audience members who's having problems with the distance camera not holding or maintaining a charge? Um, should they contact customer service at APH? Well, yes, uh, you, you can contact uh, customer support at APH, but we do offer what I recommend is a um, an external battery pack that you can connect to the distance uh, camera. I'm going to show you one. I, I know that now the new Mat Connects, if you buy a Mat Connect, uh, it comes with it. Uh, it didn't previously, but we've, we've included that in, in the box now. But basically, I have one here that um, it, it's a battery pack. It's a, a normal battery pack that you can use uh, to charge your cell phone if you want or any other uh, electronics device. And I have a USB cable connected to it. And uh, uh, the other end is a, is a, is a micro uh, USB. And you can connect that to the uh, distance camera with the port of the distance camera, which is on the side. And it's gonna bring the um, autonomy of your distance camera uh, to, depending on the size of the battery pack, but the one that we're offering now with the Mat Connect, uh, it extends it to, uh, I think, to six or seven hours of use. That's great. Thank you so much for that, Eric. Yeah, that's a great feature to, that's included on uh, all Mac Connects purchased in the future. And yes, to the person who just dropped a question on our chat, Mac Connect is available on Quota, and we'll talk about purchasing options at the end of this webinar. So let's go ahead and close the poll. It's been up for a, a little over 10 minutes, so we, we took a long break to talk through some questions. So true or false, users can operate Google Drive on the Mac Connect. 93% said true. Is that the correct answer, Eric? That is true. It, it is a correct answer. We, we did use the Google Drive to import a PDF. Absolutely. All right. So Nikki, we can hand uh, control of the screen back over to Eric and continue on with our remaining uh, nine minutes in this webinar. Good. It's not going to take long. I just wanted to show you a cool feature because on, on PDFs, sometimes when you, for example, scan a PDF from a printer, the printer will take an image of every sheet and they will, there's no text associated to the, an image. So what I have here, I have an example. It's in French, but I just wanna show you the example. It just worked very well with this document. So that's why I'm showing it to you. And it's a very colorful document at the same time. So I'm gonna go into my gallery. I, I had in my Google Drive already, I've downloaded it onto my Mac Connect and I'm gonna go in my gallery, click on the settings button on the top right corner go into import into my settings menu. Again, in my internal storage, scroll to download. And I have my Aladdin.pdf that I want to import. So it's a, it's a nice little PDF where it's a picture that was taken and was created in the PDF. So I don't have any text that was replaced. So the quality of when I'm gonna zoom in is not that great. So if I zoom in, Quality, quality, quality is not that great. It's written in, in small fonts and special fonts. It's not, uh, it's not very well contrasted. So what you can do 
is run an OCR on this image. And how you do that is you go in, you go back here. If I want to run an OCR only on the image, I can press and hold on the image. And then on my action menu, scroll down and there is run OCR option. Tap on that. It's gonna run the OCR only on that page. I could have done the same for the whole document by going one step up. So I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna go one step up. I'm gonna find my folder called Aladdin where my book is, where my PDF is. Press and hold on that folder. You're gonna get action menus. And then you scroll down at the end. The last option at the bottom is run OCR. So if I tap on that, OCR is started and it's gonna go and do the OCR. OCR means optical character recognition. It means it's gonna find all the characters and gonna, it's gonna replace it with, I'm gonna call it computer font, just like in your Word document. And you're gonna have that great image quality when you're gonna zoom in. So if I select my, my image here, there we go. So it detected the text inside my image and it replaced it. But it also detected that I had it, real images. So it just highlighted those real, real images, kept the color of my, my PDF. But the text now, if I zoom in to the text here, I see that the text has changed and I've replaced the whole text. So I have a better font quality and I can really zoom in to that word and without any without losing my image quality. So you can see really that great image quality. And you can have it read out loud to you. If I press play, it's gonna go through the text and read it out loud for you. Okay. So that's a, a cool little feature because I get, I get a lot of emails here and there and people um, say, well, I can't, there, when I can't, I can't read my PDFs because it says no text found. And that's the reason why it did not attach any text to the PDF. So just run that little, uh, OCR option, and, and it's going to solve the problem for you. So I think I'm right on the dot. Am I good for the nine minutes? So I think we, I think we covered everything. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. So we have one final poll that we can launch, uh, and then Paul has a few wrap-up uh, slides. So let's go ahead and launch this final poll. Absolutely. So uh, we do it. We want to just a yes or no question here. Can a student complete a handout on the Mac Connect without having the, the printed document in front of them? Can a student complete a handout on the Mac Connect without having the printed document in front of them? Uh, it's a, just a simple yes or no question. It, it should be an easy one. <laughs> it should. It should. <laughs> should we go through our next slides while they finish the poll? Please, Paul. Yes, we haven't had any more questions drop in the chat. So let's go through those slides. So let's talk about our discoveries or sometimes what people say, what have we learned today? Uh, Humanware and APH provide lots of resources, especially the uh, skills checklist to help students and teachers learn different skills on the Mat Connect. Very helpful. Uh, it's quick and easy to convert a variety of different file types to PDF to use them on the Mac Connect. So you've got to use a PDF. Well, it's easy to convert many different file types and then make it available for your Mac Connect. The paperless functionality of, Mac, of the Mac Connect makes it since learning and also in-person learning. So you're not just using it as a CCTV magnifier. The paperless functioning really does help out quite a bit in those different settings. And not only can students read handouts, but they can also read books on their Mac Connect. And uh, receiving and submitting paperwork is also very easy with all of the different options that we have shown you today. So hopefully we've been able to address several of those challenges that have come up over the last little bit. And of course, uh, we'll be happy to do our best to answer more of your questions. We just have two final slides we want to get to. One is related to an event that is being held soon. It's the 2021 National Coding Symposium. It's for free virtual coding symposium. It's being held 
by the APH Connect Center and the California School for the Blind, CSB. It's from November 11th through the 14th, Tuesday the 11th through Friday the 14th. It is free and it's a great way to demonstrate uh, the value of coding and how it will help with uh, career choices for students. Uh, learn more and register for that event at connectcenter.org slash coding. That's uh, connectcenter.org slash coding. If you can't remember where it is, go to the Connect Center website. You'll be able to find it from there. But uh, the short address is connectcenter.org slash coding. That'll get you there the quickest. And finally, real quick, uh, let's take a look at our Matt Connect slide. Um, can I can I just uh, in, can I just add something on the code? Coding? Oh sure, please. On that, APH offers a great device called the Code Jumper, and just for your information, we can connect the Code Jumper onto the Mat Connect, uh, and use the Mat Connect in conjunction with the Code Jumper. So that's an awesome feature. If you guys love coding or your students, you'd like to teach your student uh, how to code, or it just brings that the math and the science and everything together. Yeah, the new app for Android now has makes that possible. So we're really glad you brought that up. Uh, Matt Connect available from APH for $2,995. Of course, has the camera, the keyboard, several other features and functions. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, take a look at our, at APH.org and find it there. Give us a call. We'll be happy to go over any other questions you have. And there are a number now of saved Matt Connect webinars that are on our page. All sorts of topics that we've covered in the last year, just about now, and more to come each month. So we'll have one for you on May 14th, all about virtual learning and all the different platforms and how Matt Connect works with them. So we thank you very much for, for coming in today. Betsy, and did you have anything else you wanted to say to wrap us up? Absolutely. So to collect ACV REP credit, um, our closing code today is instruction. Instruction is the final code today, and I'm dropping that link in the chat so you have easy access to get your ACV REP credit today. Uh, we thank ACS Captions for being with us for this webinar, and if you need to drop off, uh, feel free to do so. But Eric, we've got two questions that came into the chat. Do you have time to answer those? Absolutely. So I know that when um, a customer purchases Matt Connect through the APH website from here on out, it's going to come with all of those great uh, accessories like the, the keyboard, the stylus, and the external battery pack. But for someone who already has a Matt Connect, where do they need to purchase those? Like the external um, battery pack for the camera. Well, you, you can call the, uh, the customer helpline for, at Newmanware, and we'll, uh, we'll be happy to help you out on purchasing these kinds of, uh, of, of accessories, especially I love the keyboard. Um, keyboard, it acts like a remote control at the same time. Love the keyboard. It has those big uh, fonts on the keyboard. It's a small one also, and it's it, it very portable. Uh, the battery pack, um, you can use any battery pack, like I said. You don't have to go and purchase it uh, through Humanware or APH, but you can, you can use any other battery pack. And there's also a nice, uh, accessory that comes now with the APH, um, Matt Connect, is the uh, leather casing. So, for example, it's, you're, you're going out with your students to the zoo. Hopefully, it's going to come back without COVID. And then you can protect <laughs> your, your tablet and bring it along with you and take pictures or zoom in or zoom out uh, while you're on the go. All right, thanks for that, Eric. And one final question. How quickly can a student set up the Mac Connect when they move to other classes? So thinking about when we're back in person and a student's having mm -hmm. to pick up and move, how quick and easy is that? So I think you can see my camera, right? And I'm showing here, I'm just gonna remove here my chat. Okay, so I have my, the Mac Connect. It's already open like I had it for my webinar. Uh, the, the thing to do, take out the uh, little distance camera put it in your backpack, and then you can just fold. It's two folds, and then 
there's a little handle that you can use to go in a boat. And you, this fits in a backpack. I've traveled all over the world with this in a backpack and uh, very nice, it fits nicely. Once you're ready to use it, just unfold. It's really two movements and there's a power button and uh, you're ready to go. It's that simple. And then just the, uh, the camera, you can put it on the right or the left hand side. Uh, there's slots for uh, both sides to use uh, and set up the camera. Very easy to use. Very yeah, easy I, to I love the foldability and that handle is such a clever idea for allowing a student to, to walk between classes. Like I said, you can take out the tablet, uh, put it in the uh, little leather casing, which uh, makes it uh, nice. You also have access to Bookshare. There's a, a books application on Prodigy that you can connect to several other libraries Apart from Bookshare, uh, there's Bookshare also. So you can read, imagine reading your book in your, in your sofa. You don't need the stand. You can just read my book uh, in my hands in the, in the tablet, on the tablet. Excellent. So that's all we've got today, guys. Uh, we didn't close our poll, but everybody, uh, we had 100% people answer correctly. Can a student complete <laughs> a handout on the Mac Connect without having a printed document in front of them? Yes, yes, they can. And that makes the Mac Connect ideal for not only in person, but also remote learning um, to be able to download those documents directly onto your Mac Connect. So thank you, Eric, for being with us today. We love uh, joining you to talk about the Mac Connect. Uh, and we appreciate your time. And thanks to our audience as well for sticking around for these final questions. Absolutely. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. All right. Bye, everyone. Have a great rest of your day today. Bye-bye.